In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know in order to get started with plasticity, even if you're a complete beginner. Let's go. We're going to start with installing plasticity. So I'll show you where to get it, how to install it, etc. Then we're going to talk about the UI and finally about how to use and perform basic operations in plasticity. Also, I'm going to give you some cool tips and tricks. Now, before we start, I want to say that if you're really serious about learning 3D, I highly recommend you check in our Academy 2.0 program with almost 600 members right now. It's an inner circle with private Discord and weekly Q&A. We can ask us directly questions and get instant feedback. Academy comes with a full curriculum of courses and assets. They currently for Blender, but we're expanding into plasticity. So when the new courses for plasticity are gonna come out, they're gonna be added to Academy. So if you're going to lock your access right now, you will be basically getting a fantastic deal. So check it out, link in the video description, and let's get started. Step number one is going to be downloading and installing the application. So go to plasticity.xyz or xyz and get your copy. That's a legit website, so don't panic when you see this extension. And you're going to see here platforms. You can choose between Windows, Mac, and Linux, so choose whatever you're using. And you're good to go. Download it, install it, just like an ad application, sort it. Next, go to pricing and you need to choose your license because you need to activate plasticity. So either go with a free trial, which is a 30-day trial. Then you got indie license and you also got studio license. Now, until recently, I would advise you to get the indie license because it's more than enough for most people. But honestly, with the addition of XNARPS feature, which is here, things have changed. I really think you should get the studio license because it's fucking nuts. Now, the difference between not having x and having x is it's like working with and without add-ons in Blender. You can perform most of the operations using the indie license, but there's some situations and some very tricky surfaces that you can't, and also x are much quicker. So x are like... NARPS on crack. It's actually a plugin, standalone plugin for programs like Rhino, and it costs four hundred dollars. So you're getting X NARPS for hundred bucks off with plasticity with it, which is insane. So you know it's a really it's a really game changer. Honestly, the X NARPS. I've been playing with it a lot, and what you can do with this shit is insane. It's kind of like a high end A class surfacing for plasticity. Nuts. Now, once you get your license, you're going to get an email. That's important to keep that email because you're going to get an activation code with that email. So save that code, keep the email, don't delete it, because you will need that activation code in the future if you're going to be installing new versions or you're going to be, for example, extending your license, which means you're renewing your license, because the license is actually for 12 months, which means that you can install, download and install any updates within your license that come within a year, and after one year elapses, what you need to do is renew a license. Now, the renewal of the license doesn't cost a full amount. I don't remember exactly what's the percentage, but it's not full amount. But again, keep the code, keep the activation code handy and don't lose it. So now once you get your plasticity installed, you should be able to see that window. So now what we're going to do, we're going to talk about the UI and the basic settings, and then we're going to move on to tools and usage, etc. Okay. So first, what you want to do is you want to go to this menu and go to preferences and now if you're coming from a different software like maya uh Pff, rhino you know moi 3d whatever you can actually set the preset uh shortcut keys to your software so it's gonna be a bit easier to learn the basics and be more intuitive for you now i come from blender so i'm gonna set blender but if you come from different software just use that now under performance here you want to switch it a bit if you're running a beefy machine if not just keep it at default and other than that if you don't want to do anything else don't worry about it. Now, if you're working in Blender, you want to get and download the free bridge for plasticity to Blender, and it's a fantastic software. And now you will be needing the this server uh, data here to connect to Blender bridge. Now I have a separate video on that, so go ahead and watch it. I explain how the bridge works and how to use it with plasticity, but that's another information that you might be needing when you're starting. All right. Cool, so close that and we're good to go. UI is super simple, so let's talk about it. First of all, on the left hand side, you got collections, just like in Blender. Now here, you have three types of objects. You got solids, which is just like cube or cylinder or you know um, a sphere, something that's manifold, which means watertight, right? 
Then you got sheets, which is something that's open, so non-manifold. So watch this. This cube is solid, right? But if I go to three to select faces, click on a face and shift X to delete it, boom, it's changed to sheets, right? So sheets are non-manifold solids or basically like planes, etc. Okay. Then you got curves. So if I'm gonna go here and grab this one and draw a curve here, you see that we're gonna have a new uh, collection here called curves. That's all you need to know about this. You can create folders by clicking this icon or pressing Ctrl G, and you can create folders just like in Blender. Okay. Next is gonna be this menu up here. So one for verts or points, two for edges, three for faces, four for solids, and five for everything. You can also press tab, the same result. So press one and tab selects all. Now, honestly, I'm using the one, two, three, four mode most of the time because it allows me to cross select faces, edges, etc. on different meshes in my scene. So if I press four and I'm gonna duplicate this cube here and I have five selected, which means everything, First, I need to select the objects I want to select faces, edges on. So click and click again to select them. Too much clicking. If I press, for example, three for faces, I can cross select faces on any of these solids without selecting the solid, right? So it's really quick. In addition to that, if you notice that if I press one on the keyboard, uh, there are no points on these cubes that are solids. Solids don't have points. The only thing that has points is curves. So if I draw a curve in here, you can see they have points and I can select the point and then move it, right? So if you're selecting points and hovering over a solid, wondering where the fuck are my verts, you ain't gonna find any, okay? Next menu is up here. This is really simple. You got the perspective versus orthographic. Then you have the toggle of the uh, of the grid and axes. Then you got X-ray, which is Alt-Z, just like in Blender, so you can see through your mesh, right? It's really cool when, you, when you're modeling. And then the last one is actually rendering view. So if you click that, you'll enter kind of like a render preview with the lighting, right? And if you right click it, you can actually access ModCap. So you can choose a ModCap and you can look at your model and see the shading. And then if you have custom ModCaps, which I'm not gonna be talking about in this video, you can hold shift and scroll through your custom ModCaps, all right? Um, so there you go. So let me just go back here to a regular ModCap and to the 3D viewport, we good to go. So left click, render view, right click, mod cups. This motherfucker here, don't worry about it, it's actually a gizmo that allows you to switch views. I don't use this. You can also use control one, two, three, etc. on a numpad. Honestly, uh, there's a faster way of doing this. You can hold out on your keyboard and middle mouse button and just gesture with your mouse up, down, left, you know, it's really quick. You can see here in the top, which view in. It's really quick, so I'll be using this. Next one's gonna be snapping. So here we get snap to grid. I don't use it. And this one is quite important, comes on by default, and that's enable snapping to anything. So let's say I have a curve and I want to snap it to this corner. I can do it, you can see it highlights all the edges, and I know when I'm, I'm in a corner. And it's really important to be able to snap precisely to points or edges or faces because you need to have connected elements in order to perform some kind of operations like lofting, patching, or x norms. If mesh is disconnected, you may have some errors. The same with, for example, closing the mesh, so making it manifold. You really need to have, you know, mesh connected uh, or edges and, and curves connected to the mesh in order for this to work. So the snapping is really important. The only time I would turn it off, I would turn it off when I, for example, want to you know, draw a curve really close to something that's going to auto snap and I'm going to switch it off and I can really dial it in, right? So that's very really important. As an additional tip I can give you that if you press tab twice, you can set the angle of this curve to, let's say, 45 degrees. And now I'm drawing 45 degrees, it's locked in, right? Uh, but you can also use the snapping right here to, to snap to elements or imaginary kind of like a guidelines. So watch this, if I draw a curve, and I wanted to mimic the, let's say this cube was rotated, right? So I'm going to rotate this cube like this, okay? And I wanted to draw a code into this angle to create echoing of angles in my design. I click here and I tap shift along this line. So I hover over and tap shift and I can do that. And I can also tap here to create an intersection to precisely determine the angle that's going to mimic this angle. It's really useful. So this snapping feature is fucking overpowered. Next is going to be this menu here, and this menu is really important. That's going to be a bread and butter of your 
modeling in plasticity mostly curves 80 percent is curves and then you got the solids in the bottom so now if i wanted to for example start drawing curves i can hover over here or press shift a you can see shortcut coming up and start drawing a curve on my on my canvas and uh, you know then you can select for example this curve which is a spline curve and do something like this and then when you hover over this menu click and hold just like in photoshop you can um sort of unfold additional menu and these are really cool tools so for example if i had two curves here just gonna give you one example shift it to duplicate it now let's say i wanted to create a perfect tangent arc between them i go here and hold and i'm gonna go to tangent arc and i'm going to click here click here and got a perfect tangent arc between these two lines right so the perfect continuity in curvature between them there's a lot of precision tools in plasticity and you can create some really sick precise design uh, designs using these curves and snapping features okay so play with that so then you got uh, other tools here like bridging bridging is really important when you want to bridge for example two uh, edges in space together so let's say if i had uh, uh, let's say cube or, 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 or a curve okay we're gonna have a curve here like this right and curve here like that okay they in space and they you can see that they're angled right so let's just rotate this one to make it more interesting uh, let's say you wanted to combine them uh, with a bridge to so bridge them with a curve but in a way there's going to be tangent it's going to be continuity of curvature between them you can use this bridge feature right and you can just simply you know connect them like this or you can even draw them in like that it's a bit more advanced you got more options here to you know determine where you want to place these points what kind of connection you want etc i'm going to explain this a bit uh, in in depth later on in this video okay so now um, these are all the features here then you have a trimming tool for trimming curves so for example if you um, draw a curve let's say uh, i'm gonna go here and select the circle and draw a curve and i'm gonna run a curve across it right and they all on the same plane because even they're not on the same plane, what you want to do is you want to make sure they're on the same plane. So you want to zero them on a plane by pressing S, X axis. You see there's a red one uh, here, X axis, so X and zero, right? To zero them in, just like in Blender. And right click to confirm. You confirm everything in plasticity with a right click. Then what you can do, you can use the trim tool here. You can press T for trimming, and you can trim anything that you don't need in order to create the shape you want. So it's really cool to create some, you know, complex uh, drawing outlines of your shape and then extrude them into solids, right? That's how you work. Next one's going to be this point curve here. This one is really cool. So when I have a curve and I want to have more points on this curve, right? Let's say something like this. I can click here and create additional points. So if I press 1, you can see I have another point. So I can now move this point, let's say, on the, you know, z-axis to create something like that. And if I wanted to create a control point curve out of this, I simply double click here and now I can select this point and I can you know adjust this curve now here you got solids you can start drawing from uh, this corner if you want to draw from the middle just tap C C is going to switch between corner and the middle so the center center point the origin point click here drag left click and then right click to confirm you confirm everything with a right click so for example if I wanted to press 2 for edge click here and you're going to see this gizmo and i'm going to start dragging to create the chamfer or dragging out of way to create a bevel i right click to confirm right and when you confirm you can see that these both of these menus on the bottom about which i'm going to be talking in a minute disappear because operation is confirmed okay so there you go and then you got this menu here which is actually construction plane construction planes are really useful when you want to work in a specific on a specific angle and it's quite tricky so let's say this is rotated like this right and i want to start drawing uh, on this plane um, it's going to be quite tricky but what i can do is press space to enter this temporary construction plane and i can also save it right and you can see it's going to appear here so when i'm going to actually nuke this construction plane and go back to whatever view i want to draw in and enable this construction plane you can see that the grid shifted and now when i'm going to be drawing anything on this plane here it's going to be actually on that construction plane look do you see what i mean so that's really useful for creating some complex shapes on very tricky angles from an angle that's actually easy to see for you in order to draw something yeah so that's really useful next going down we got this bullshit which is a fps counter for i don't know your mom or something i don't know what the fuck is this 
for performance of the you know interface i don't know why the fuck would anyone need that but uh i asked actually on discord on plus discord if i can turn it off but um no reply i'm guessing you can't so maybe nick's gonna add the you know if you nick if you're watching please give me a fucking toggle man because this shit is fucking annoying but what you can do you can actually use pure ref to cover it up so you can set the pure ref here and you can take a screenshot uh, of this um by the way, if you're wondering what kind of software I'm using for screenshots, it's called Sherex. It's amazing. You can take GIFs and screenshots. So I take a screenshot of this thing. I just paste it in here and simply, you know, expand this here like that. And Bob your uncle. I can't see anything. It doesn't annoy me anymore. Now going down, let's talk about this one first. That's completely redundant. It's menu for moving, scaling, you know, basic operations that you don't really gonna be going here ever you're just gonna be using shortcuts okay because it's faster so for example if i have a cube right and i want to move this i'm gonna go here to move which is g then i'm gonna move it you just press g man or gg to move it in space right so i never go to this menu i never use it even once um, so honestly don't worry about it now let's talk about contextual menus because they're really important so these menus are here in the bottom and when I click on something like, let's say this cube, you can see that we have options here. So for example, I can array it. I can click here and I can array it. And I got another menu here that helps me to define what kind of array I want. You know, I can, you know, change the number of uh, these iterations. Uh, I can change the distance between them. Now, watch what happens when I'm gonna press three, four faces and click on this face here. I'm gonna have a completely different menu here, which is a contextual menu, like I said. So it depends on what you're selecting. You're going to see different options. You also have shortcuts. So if I go to two for edge and click on this edge, automatically I'm entering bevel option. So you can see a menu on the left hand side that determines, you know, what kind of bevel I'm drawing. So for example, I can start drawing a bevel or chamfer, depending which way I'm going to go with the mouse and the menu is shifting. You see that? And then I can determine what kind of bevel I want. You know, I can change all these options in here to create different curvature or, for example, change tension on one of the sides, which is really cool. You can also create something like a double bevel. So if I'm going to have two edges selected, right, and I'm going to start drawing the bevel, you can see that I can click on a full and it's going to round up this corner. So you just have to look at these messages and these menus and start learning slowly what kind of options you have. There's no way I can cover all of this in one video. Uh, but basically, you're going to pick them up when you're watching tutorials or courses, you know, etc. Okay. There's also one more thing that I need to tell you about. It's F menu. That's really important. So when you press F, it's kind of like search bar in, in Blender when you can search all the functions or all the operations you can perform. And you can also assign shortcuts or find shortcuts that are assigned to certain operations. Like, for example, if you want to bridge something. So let's say I had this cube here, right? Shift D, I'm going to move it in here and I'm going to rotate it like this. And I wanted to bridge these two edges together. I can select this edge, shift, select this edge, go to F menu, type bridge, right? And I can now bridge um, curves, bridge edges, bridge surfaces, bridge vertices, etc. So let's say I wanted to bridge edge. You can see that the shortcut is Shift E. Now, the reason why it's blue is because a custom shortcut made by me. I created the shortcut. If it's gray, like here, it's a default shortcut. And when you see a red one, it means you duplicated a shortcut key that already existed and you got a conflict. Sometimes can be, you know, sometimes can work when you have, for example, a shortcut that works only in face mode and the other in edge mode, but sometimes it can conflict, so be careful. So now if I'm going to select these two and press Shift E, it's gonna bridge these two edges because Shift E is to bridge edge. And then you're gonna get another options in here and of course in here. So I can, you know, perform different operations depending on what I want to do. So that's all you need to know about the very basics of plasticity, the UI, the basic operations, etc. And in the next video, I'm going to be going a bit more in depth on how to actually use all these features. I'm going to be going deeper into, you know, specific operations and so on. OK, now, like I said in the beginning, if you're really into 3D and you want to learn, you're serious about it. Have a look at our Academy 2.0 program, which has a fantastic curriculum of courses and assets. And like I said, now we're going to be going into plasticity. So all the content that you're going to lock in right now is going to benefit you later on. We're going to be adding plasticity content for free to Academy members. The link to Academy is in the video description. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.